this story, the predator becomes the prey. So in this case, we can quickly select a, a target. Once billed as a magic bullet, but later dubbed a train wreck, it is the costliest war machine ever. Lockheed Martin's F-35 stealth fighter. And then we can pull the trigger and launch. For years, the F-35 was called the plane that Canada had to have. But now, stealth or no, it is a tempting target. Way behind schedule, way over budget, and grounded by engine problems. Its makers say that's normal, it's a new plane still being tested, but its competitors smell blood. The God's Eye View, it's the battle management perspective. God's uh, Eye View. Well, let's call it the battle management perspective. It's what, what we want to see is the whole battle. We are checking out the flight simulators at the home of the F-35's biggest rival, Boeing in St. Louis. The battle, of course, is for giant defense contracts, and whatever you say about the F-35, Boeing has an answer. F-35 has this uh, helmet-mounted display with ultimate whiz-bang technology. You don't have that. Is this last year's technology? Uh, is this out of date? Absolutely not. We actually do have that helmet technology in advance. Details like high-tech helmets and targeting displays matter in a contest to rule the skies. All the younger pilots consistently walk in and see this display and immediately want to want to maneuver it in the same yeah, manner me that too. they Can did. I touch absolutely. that? Absolutely. You can touch that. If you double-touch it, a double-tap, and then move it, um, you can actually make it, there you go, oh. change perspective. The sheer scale of the fighter business does change your perspective. Boeing lost out on billions when the US, Canada and other allies all picked the F-35 years ago, saying they wanted stealth and that Boeing's fighters were not stealthy enough. But now the F-35 stumbles are giving Boeing a second shot. Their plane is way cheaper, but they say that does not mean it's second rate. Mike Gibbons is Boeing's vice president for the Super Hornet program. Is there any really real difference between the F-35 and the Super Hornet with respect to stealth? If in terms of uh, actual effective stealth, I don't believe there's any difference. The folks at Boeing are tired of being painted as a second best budget solution that doesn't even have the latest stealth technology. They say their plane, the Super Hornet, is just as stealthy and way cheaper. So the current actual cost to operate a Super Hornet are less than half the cost that the F-35 is projected to be once it's in operation. Well, just easy to, to say, but you don't know that, do you? That's correct. Uh, no one knows actually how, uh, how costly that jet will actually be once it's in operation. We do know how, uh, how, how affordable the Super Hornet is currently because we have actual costs. But this debate isn't just about dollars. It's personal for Ricardo Traven. He is a Canadian. He flew for Canada's Air Force and is now Boeing's chief test pilot for the Super Hornet. He calls it a proven plane with hundreds already flying on U.S. Navy carriers. Well, he calls the F-35 just a concept. We call it competing with a paper airplane. You know, when you have a, a real airplane with one behind you and you compete against a paper airplane, it's, it's like on the table you're, you're competing against a shiny brochure of promises versus the real thing. That shiny brochure, Traven says, doesn't tell the whole story. F-35 has stealth. You don't, right? No, that's not true. It's called the stealth fighter because of so many sacrifices that have been made in the design of the airplane for the purpose of stealth. It's all about survivability. Ricardo Traven says pilots want an agile aircraft with big wings and flaps to give them control, but stealth gives them the opposite. The stealth engineers don't want large flaps. They don't want large ailerons. They don't want large wings. And so everything is shrunk down on an airplane like that to be stealthy. And so the cost of stealth is not just the money. The cost is in capability and in performance. And so now the question is, how small, how small can you make this? How small can I shrink it in size so that it is invisible to a radar? Traven says bigger flaps and wings also make the Super Hornet better on icy runways up north. Ditto two wheels on the nose gear. And he says the two engines mean you still have one if a bird gets sucked into the other. It's the goose that didn't get the memo. It's the bird that goes down the intake that now can cause a loss of a, a multi-million dollar airplane. 
uh, far offshore, and chances are recovering that pilot, if it's in the winter or at sea, very, very low. We also have a helmet-mounted display here. Ricardo Traven could talk all day about the Super Hornet, and his message is reaching Canada, where he has an old Air Force buddy, General Tom Lawson, no less, who just happens to be Canada's Chief of Defence Staff. The F-35 has a level of stealth. Uh, which Lawson was a big fan of stealth in the F-35, but he seems to be cooling on that. Every aircraft brings a level of stealth. Uh, so in our operational requirement, what we need to do is provide an idea of the level of stealth that we believe is required, and then it's got to be assessed by uh, teams, whole of government teams, to see what aircraft can meet those requirements. Does the Super Hornet meet those? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to leave that to the, uh, to the team to look at. We don't have Super Hornets. Uh, we have not uh, until recently even considered uh, purchasing them. Uh, so I think that Ricardo Traven, my good friend that you mentioned, uh, might have something to say about that that would, uh, uh, that would interest the teams, the whole of government teams that are together to consider it. We have hit the reset button. We are now pressing the reset. We immediately pressed reset on this process. There is little doubt now that the government wants to get past its previous embarrassing embrace of the F-35 and its soaring cost. If the Super Hornet really does cost half as much, the savings really could be in the billions. But the bigger question is in the U.S. Congress. Nobody knows where the budget axe is going to fall, and it could easily fall on the F-35. The Air Force. Are we going to have less airplanes? We'll have to have less airplanes, Senator. What happens to the F-35? Depends on what the top line is going forward. Short term, it's one to two airplanes this year. And well, let's say sequestration fully goes into effect. We're going to have to look completely at the program. But some U.S. allies have looked already. Australia still hopes to buy F-35s one day, but gave up waiting and bought dozens of Super Hornets, first as a stopgap solution, but maybe a permanent one. I think it's now become clear to all uh, that the Super Hornets are potentially much more than simply a transition fleet. The Australians are keeping an option to buy F-35s when and if they're proven and affordable. But if that doesn't happen, Australia won't be stuck with outdated fighters, which is Canada's problem too. Mr. Speaker, we remain fully committed to ensuring that our Air Force has the planes they need to do their job when the CF-18 begins to be retired later in this decade. The contest then is definitely on. Boeing is pitching the Super Hornet as the obvious solution for Canada. We'll see if they can make the sale. Tori Malaski, CBC News, St. Louis.